Hello, Damien here from Cloud Technology Experts. In this series of videos, I'm going to walk you through how to create a secured website, first on Amazon EC2, then on Docker containers, and finally on Kubernetes. So if you want to follow through the project, you can come here to this website, cloudtechnologyexperts.com, then come here to resources, click on technical blog, and right here you see the project, how to create a secured website on Amazon EC2. Click on that, and then you can follow through the project. Here, I did the introduction to what we're going to be doing. You can read through it so we don't waste a lot of time on the video. And then on day two, I discussed the topology diagram. And today, being day three, I'm going to talk about how to create the VPC or the network for this secured website on Amazon EC2. So like I said, the plan is all here. So try to go through this at your own time. We're going to do the project in phases. Phase one, which is what we're starting today, then move to phase two, and then move to phase three, and then phase four. So for today, again, this is what we're going to do. We're going to create a VPC with two public subnets. So this discussion is under AWS VPC, which is Virtual Private Cloud. In AWS, if you want to uh, create an EC2, you need to make sure that you have a network available to connect the EC2. Creating it on itself is not difficult. However, you need to understand the fundamentals of networking to really understand VPC. And because this is a huge topic, I will not particularly go too much into the details of networking here, but I will walk you through the steps on how to create a VPC. So if we come back here, if you read through, you get a kind of introduction to Amazon VPCs. So let me make that bigger. And you can go through the definition here. What is, what is a VPC? A VPC is basically the network that you're going to use to host EC2. One of the things with VPCs is that you have to make sure you have the CIDR available for your network. And usually this CIDR has to be in the private network. And then you need to understand too that the VPC spans an entire region. Second thing to understand is the subnets. So these subnets are the VLANs, which means we're going to subnet this network and create smaller networks. We're going to use each of the subnet address for a subnet. And a subnet exists at the availability zone. So if you have, for example, six AZs, you want to create six subnets. You may need to use just two, but you may, you may need the other ones at some point as well. Another thing to understand is the router or the route table. This is how the VPC controls traffic um, in and out of the VPC. And then we have the internet gateway, which is what connects you to the outside. This is what connects the outside to the VPC itself. So those are the four things we need to take note of. VPC, subnets, route tables, then internet gateway. All this is illustrated with this diagram here, which I like a lot when it comes to understanding the traffic flow between you and the EC2 instance here that you are trying to create. So again, this is the VPC. This exists at the region level, and these are the different subnets that we created or that we're going to create. Subnet one, subnet two. We can decide to make both of them public or we can make one subnet public and the other one private. So here are the subnets. Here, here are the EC2 instances that you may want to reach. But before you can reach these EC2 instances from the internet, you have to first of all hit the internet gateway and then traffic will get directed to the router and with the help of the route table, traffic will either flow down here 
or here. Before you eventually hit the EC2 instance here, you need to go through two layers of security. First is the network access control list. Second is the security group. Now, the thing with the network access control list or NACO is that we don't normally have to do anything in there because by default, traffic is allowed in and out of the VPC. However, for the security group, normally only the SSH protocol is allowed if it's EC2 Linux, uh, but RDP is also allowed if it is Windows. Any other thing, you have to go to the security group and make sure that you allow the rule. So again, traffic comes from outside, from your home, for, from wherever you are, and then traffic will flow all the way this way until you hit your inst instance. Take note, this EC2 instance is what we're going to use to host our secured website. So this is the reason we're going to create this network or this VPC. Notice another thing. Normally, AWS gives you a default VPC in every region whenever you create your free account. So every region has a VPC. And if that region or if a particular region has, for example, six AZs, AWS will create a subnet for you in each of those AZs. But all these subnets are public. There's no private subnet in there. And for what I want to do, the default subnet is actually sufficient because I don't really need a private subnet. In the introduction, I mentioned that in this project, we're not going, going to use a database. And because we're not using a database, we don't particularly have a need for any private subnet. So again, just to refresh, if you come down here, you can take a look at the topology diagram that we're going to use. So here's the region. Here's a VPC that we saw earlier. Here's the Internet Gateway that we also saw earlier. And we're going to create two AZs. All of them will be public here and here. So pretty much that will be the first phase of the project. All right. So with that understanding, we're simply going to go on to our AWS console and create this topology. So I assume you already have your AWS account created. All you have to do is come here and log in. For me, I already signed on, so I'm here on my dashboard. So we're going to create a VPC. So let's click on VPC here. If you don't have it here, just search for it here. Search for VPC and then click on VPC. Okay, so now I have my dashboard for VPCs. And we need to create a VPC, subnet, route tables, and internet gateways. We need to create this for uh, resources for us to have a complete end-to-end -end working VPC. Usually, I just ask students to start from the top. So just click on here or come here and say create VPC. And I'm going to click on VPC only for now. And I'm going to give it a name. I can call it Secure Website VPC. We're going to use IPv4. And I can use 192.168. Dot zero dot zero slash 16 because that is easy to subnet I don't need to do any calculation before I can subnet this so other than that everything is good just say create step one completed move to subnets we're going to create just two subnets remember so let's create a first subnet and we need to select the VPC, and the VPC is this one here that we just created. And now we need to give it a name, and I'm just going to give it something like subnet1 secure website. Okay, give it any name you want, but try to make it make sense. 
I'm going to choose AZ A. See what I meant earlier? Your subnet has to reside in an AZ. Now we're going to give it a subnet address. So 192.168.0.0.0. I'm going to use a slash 24 and just say create. That's the first one. Create another one and select the VPC again. Come here and say subnet 2 secure website. Let it, let's put it on B and let's put 192.168.1.0 24. So remember, the cider is a slash 16, but the subnet is a slash 24. The last one had a zero here, zero, zero, but it won't let me create two subnets with the same cider block. So if I say create subnet, it's going to complain. So I need to make sure that I put the right subnet. So this is all covered under the knowledge of how to subnet. That is why I said earlier that you need to have a good networking fundamentals to be able to create uh, VPCs. But again, you have the default VPC that you can use even if you don't have those fundamentals. So that's fine. Now I can say create subnet. Now we move to route tables. In the route tables, we're just going to say create route table. And I'm just going to call it route table secure a website and select my VPC which is this one here and I just say create route table come back to, come down to internet gateways and I'm going to say create internet gateway and now say IGW secure a website and just say create internet gateway after that, remember uh, to attach it here. This is how you do it in AWS. You have to remember to attach it. So click on that. Select your VPC. Attach. And we are almost done. Did you see how I did it? I came here, 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 here. But now we need to go back to our route tables. Because this is where the magic happens. This is where we have to say whether these subnets that we created earlier are going to be public or private. If you don't do anything to them, they remain private. But we would like to create public subnets. That is why we have to do this. So notice something as well. Anytime you create a VPC, AWS automatically creates a route table for you. So you don't have to create another one, except you need two route tables. In our own case, we need just one route table. So we had the option to use the one that was provided for us, but we went ahead and created ours anyway. So let's make use of that. So this is the one we had. Here, we're going to do two configurations. Come here to subnet and to routes. Let's start with the subnet. Click on subnet edit subnet association and we're going to make both of them public so just click both of them and say save and one final step we come back here and click on that and then we come to routes and then we say edit routes then add a route here we're going to point it to the internet and internet is basically 0 .0 .0 .0 0. And then we come here to the target and select Internet Gateway and select the Internet Gateway that we created. And then we save it. And that's it. We went through all the steps to create a functioning VPC. Guess what? I'm not going to try or test this today, but tomorrow when we create the EC2 instance, we will see whether this is functioning or not. I did all I could, so I believe this should work. But we will see. Tomorrow, we will try this out. All right. So you see how easy or smooth it is to create a VPC without covering all the, uh, all the fundamentals of networking? 
Okay, so pretty much with that out of the way, we just constructed this topology. We created our internet gateway. We created our router or route table. We didn't have to create this. This is created for us automatically. For now, we didn't have to create this because this was created for us automatically, but we have the option to create ours. Uh, we created a subnet and tomorrow we're going to create an EC2 instance and try this out. Very good. So I hope to see you tomorrow. I hope you're able to follow this through. And if you have any question, feel free to shoot me an email. Thank you.